Hello everyone, this is Dr. Irfan Kamruddin Andani. Today we will continue our previous topic in which we were having a discussion on first order, second order and third order bands which we used to give when we were using standard edgewise brackets. Today we will discuss about second order bands that what are those bands and how we have compensated it in contemporary edgewise brackets. So let's begin. To understand the second order bands, you have to go into the history of Lawrence Andrews. As you know that he was a famous orthodontist and he introduced six keys to normal occlusion. But the question is that how did he reach to those six keys? In 1960s, when he was not very much satisfied with the results, especially the aesthetics of his own cases. He decided to take impression, make models and evaluate his cases thoroughly. And he reached to a conclusion that aesthetically his cases were less than ideal and not up to the mark despite class 1 molar relationship which was proper. But even then the aesthetics had some problems. Initially he was very confused and he was thinking that what is wrong with my treatment. But later on he decided to do a research on people having an ideal occlusion or near ideal occlusion. And for that in 1972 he recruited 120 non-treated cases who had ideal occlusions. And he noticed that all of these 120 patients had some features common among them. And these features he introduced in the form of six keys to normal occlusion. These are those six keys. We will not go into the detail of each key today, but the second key about crown angulation is directly related with our today's topic, second order bands. Therefore, I would like to elaborate the second key. This key is about crown angulation mesodistal tip, which says that the gingival portion of each crown is distal to the incisal portion and this angulation varies with each tooth type. What does that mean? If you see this clinical picture, you will appreciate that the whole dentition is not straight and it has some mesodistal angulation like this. Let me elaborate this point with animation. This is an ideal assembly of upper dentition with normal mesodistal angulation which nature has provided. If you want to measure the mesodistal angulation of the teeth, you will have to draw a clusal plane and draw perpendicular lines and measure the angulation of each tooth. So naturally, central incisor has 5 degree mesial angulation of the crown, lateral has 9 degree, canine has 11 degree and premolars are pretty straight around 2 degrees. Even the molars have around 5 degree mesial angulation which I have not shown in this picture. Now if we want to understand the second key in the words of Andrews, this is the gingival portion of the crown and this is incisal portion of the crown. So you can see that the gingival portion of the crown is inclined distally if you compare it with incisal portion of the crown. So this was the second key in which he has explained that the gingival portion of each crown is distal to the incisal portion. And this mesodistal angulation or tip values of each tooth varies. Here you should remember one more thing. Andrews talked about crown angulation instead of the long axis of the tooth because he used dental models not the x-rays and on dental models you cannot see the angulation of the root. So he talked totally about the crown angulation not about the roots. Now coming to our main topic of today that what are second order bands which we used to give when we were using a standard edgewise bracket. This is a standard edgewise bracket in which you can see the bracket is pretty straight and there is no angulation. And this is the orientation mark. When we bond any bracket on the tooth, this mark should be coinciding with the long axis of the tooth. For example, if a patient comes to you for his orthodontic treatment, however, his occlusion was ideal and in fact he did not need any kind of orthodontic treatment, but he insisted to give him braces. 
but unfortunately you just had standard edgewise brackets in your inventory and you bonded those brackets on his teeth keeping in mind the orientation line and the long axis of the teeth now think what is gonna happen when you will give him wires for the alignment and when you will reach to the finishing heavy rectangular wires this wire will not be passive in these brackets and it will cause the movements so you will get uprighting of the roots and you will lose the mesiodistal normal angulation of the dentition and what is the reason for that because all these standard edgewise brackets do not have any angulations in orthodontics we call it orthodontic look which is apart from the ideal look let me explain this with the same example I used to give in my previous lectures that if a patient comes to you with this kind of malocclusion and you have given him standard edgewise brackets, again keeping in mind that the orientation line should coincide with the long axis of the teeth. So after a series of arch wires, you will get some alignment and leveling for sure but when you will reach the heaviest rectangular wires you will get orthodontic look instead of the normal mesodistal angulations so this is something which is not desired so what is the solution solution was second order bandings in the finishing rectangular wires when you will place this wire into the standard edgewise brackets you will regain the mesiodistal angulations which was required for ideal aesthetics and ideal occlusion. These bands in the vertical plane are known as second order bands. So by definition second order or tip bands or artistic bands are occluso-gingival bands given to compensate the differences in the mesiodistal root positioning of the teeth. Is there any other option if I don't want to give these kind of bands? Yes, of course, in contemporary edgewise brackets you do not have to give these bands. If you compare the standard edgewise bracket with the contemporary edgewise bracket, you will appreciate that standard edgewise bracket was pretty straight. However, contemporary edgewise bracket is angulated. There is built-in angulation in the contemporary edgewise bracket. And this angulation depends on the type of the tooth. In other words, in contemporary edgewise bracket, all the brackets are different. Like central incisor will have 5 degree tip, lateral incisor will have 9 degree tip, canine will have 11 degree tip. This is the same thing which Andrews gave in the form of second key. That all the teeth have different angulations. And first contemporary edgewise bracket which was introduced by Andrews himself had the same angulation which the natural dentition have. Now here you must be asking that why 8 degree tip is written on this picture. So let me clarify that this is not from the Andrews prescription. This was a bit modified by MBT system which is not the topic of today. So right now ignore that thing. Now here you can see that all these brackets are not straight. They are angulated and angulation of lateral incisor is more than the central and canine is even more. So this mesiodistal tip values given by Andrews. Andrews gave mesiodistal tip values according to the natural dentition. Coming back to the previous example now. If the same patient with some kind of malocclusion comes to you and luckily this time you had contemporary edgewise bracket and you have fixed those brackets. So again after a series of wire you will get perfect alignment and leveling and when you will reach to the heaviest wire unlike standard edgewise brackets you will not lose mesiodistal angulations. So how you have compensated second order bands in contemporary edgewise brackets? These second order bands are eliminated by built-in angulation in the brackets. Thanks for listening and in our next episode I will discuss about third order bands. So stay tuned.